What up, this is Rama Screen at the LA Film Festival 2018. How's it going, everybody? And I'm here with Lucian and Farah. Yeah. All right. I hope I got that right <laughs> on their new movie. Congratulations, by the way. Thank you. Yes. Um, this film reminds me a lot of my family and everybody's family during Thanksgiving. <laughs> a lot of, a lot of the debate. By the way, the title is Heaven Without People, um, and it's fantastic. You know, uh, I was wondering where's the inspiration coming from, and also, is, do you base it on friends family or your own family yeah it's uh, actually should i uh, yeah uh, it's actually uh, based on my uh, very close friend uh, family who had uh, the main plot of it is based on that uh, who had a similar experience in a way where uh, some money got lost and they had to try to find who did it uh, kind of uh, within the family uh, before involving the police and then they actually involved in real life they actually involved the police but after a week or more but it's just an inspira a broad inspiration because I don't know really the details of what happened it was just an idea of something he told me about that happened with him and then I uh, took from this uh, the the plot, but and I then added so many other elements from uh, the characters that people I know uh, or things that I've experienced or some people have told me about. So it's a mixture between fiction, of course, and reality, like any other story. Yeah. All right. And Farah, your character Rita loves Canada. <laughs> <laughs> I love Canada too. A lot of our viewers are from Canada, um, but she's so strong-willed. She she's determined to make sure everybody sees her point of view. <laughs> um, are you a lot like Rita in any way? And uh, what's your approach to this character? I mean, uh, close in some points, but like the the strong or the rebel uh, female coming from um, a conservative society or conservative family. Uh, but then also far from different sides. Uh, so there's some common uh, common points, common characteristics between me and Rita, and then there's a lot of differences. Um, yeah, so what's more? What is that? Oh, what's your approach? Like, uh, what's your um, we had, uh, we had like, uh, in, in the process for uh, working uh, for this character, we had long rehearsals, uh, all of us with, uh, with Lucien, um, uh, very long rehearsals so over like two months before the shoot we get to know a lot uh, each other's and we get to know a lot more about our character uh, to develop it um, in in also in relationship with each other's because we have to mm. to look like a very uh, to look like a normal family where yeah. we know each other's a lot and we know everything about each other's so that's why we spend long rehearsals to get to know each other's also on a personal level and then get to know more and more those characters to know each other's and development so that we would look so much um, uh, charismatic in terms of a family unit family unity together yeah exactly yeah because I'm, I'm guessing that uh, like you said it has to look believable convincing as a yeah. family especially when you have that those arguments yeah. gotta come across right I was wondering uh, Lucian uh, as a filmmaker uh, I mean did it provide any challenges or does it make the things easier? The fact that uh, you're located only in the dining room and sometimes in the balcony uh, as far as you're situating the camera or whatnot. Can you talk a bit about the technicalities of that? And also, uh, I'm assuming that there, for continuity sake, continuity, the food who provided is the same food the whole time during production on that, on that table? <laughs> yes. Uh, it was uh, challenging technically, of course, but the good thing about it is that the unity of place allows you to go into uh, many diverse subjects that happen without losing uh, uh, and, and keeping uh, keeping it tight and keeping it one place. The, the one location and one day where it happens, it's uh, continuous time and uh, one location, helps in that because... Uh, in the film, uh, there's so many things that are being dealt with. There's so many subjects, so many themes. Mm -hmm. And uh, if there was no unity of place and time, it would have been hard to go to so many subjects and themes without the fe the, the feeling that the film is uh, too uh, too broad or getting too trying to talk about so many things. But the unity gives it this uh, help, help us in that. So in a way, it helps. In other way, it's hard because, uh, because it's ultimately... Uh, uh, it's difficult to keep the attention of the viewer when you are uh, in, in one location. It's not. It's not. It's not easy. But because uh, so many things are happening, uh, then it compensates. Uh, so many uh, things are discussed. It's. Uh, uh, 
uh, the tension is rising uh, slowly. Uh, the discussion about in case philosophical or about uh, psychological or about the inner feelings and also how to relate uh, between them and also how the viewer sees that and and immerse and the, this immersion that happens because the camera is there is there as, a, as if it's a one additional person on this table and you as an audience feel immersed in this uh, in this world and as if you are sitting there, as if you are uh, really closely watching and, uh, and you have the choice on whom to watch. So that's why each person has a different experience from the film because when you see eight characters at the same time on screen, you have the opportunity to look wherever you want. You can look at this character, what is, he, what is his reaction, and at the same time, this guy who's talking or the guy who's uh, sitting silently and looking at another person. So, so there's so many layers in the same image where you choose which way uh, to experience it because you have, might have a totally different experience on whom you would like to concentrate more as characters and whom is closest to you as a person in real life. So uh, from that sense, but uh, from other, uh, uh, the, the last question the was the food. <laughs> the food, uh, so it's, it's actually, yeah. uh, Lebanese food is known, actually. It's a very delicious food. I would uh, definitely recommend it to everybody to try it at least once. Uh, so we have the same food. Yeah, how, how to, to make it the, the same food is uh, we had a caterer that was actually sending us the same wow. three times exactly the same amount of food, which uh, every day they were starting breakfast with. <laughs> it was supposed to be, of course, not for breakfast, like uh, chicken and rice and <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah, stuff. But but they were starting to eat it at 6 a.m. in the morning sometimes, 7, so 7 a.m. And so many takes, so many repeats. Uh, it was one of the biggest aspects of our budget as well. Like yeah. <laughs> we paid a lot for food because the film has a lot of takes and a lot of some scenes we were repeating 29 times. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, like food was an important part of uh, aspect of the whole thing. And uh, it's part of the that culture. Yeah. the culture of, of uh, family dinners or lunches in, in Lebanon take. Some people were asking me, you know, does it take so much time to have lunch? It's actually true. We take a lot of time to have lunch. Full day lunch. Yeah, sometimes it starts at uh, 1 p.m. It finishes at 5 p.m. So it's really a big lunch. And you have uh, so many courses coming in until you come to the dessert, like in the film where you have the last, the dessert comes almost at the end. Um, yeah, so that's... Um, back to you, Farah. Um, I love that scene when um, you had that confrontation with Elias. I think that's the character's name, right? Yes. Elias, yeah. And uh, he said, like, are you going to let your wife talk to me like that? And But then, you know, Rita doesn't stand down. She actually says, stands up to him even more, and I like that. That's awesome. Um, and we're living in this era where more and more women are getting empowered. Um, I mean, do you think that uh, Rita embodies female empowerment? Or is that what you're hoping for with this character? I mean, or am I reading too much into it? No, no, it is. It is because especially the comparison between me and my sister. My sister is a kind of a very weak, I'd say, and, and, and being, um, um, have less power and, and less control over her life. Mm because of her, the, the power of her, her husband. Her husband is more dominant on the whole family's mm -hmm. choices. So it was like a, um, a rebel over the usual stereotypical um, Arab societies where, where women are not that much strong mm -hmm. or, or they don't censor themselves. However, that... Um, so that's why Rita was almost of an uncensored uh, version of a strong um, female coming up uh, in in this uh, patriarchal society. So that's why you don't see, you see the difference between my sister and her husband and me and my husband in the film. So it's more of me, more dominant on my husband's uh, choices. Sometimes I speak, I speak louder or I speak and he, he would stay silent. And that was like kind of um, a revolution around uh, a, re a revolution on what we usually see or expect to see from uh, Lebanese or Arab uh, families. Yeah. Yeah. Well, to go to go along with that. Um, so, do you think that we're still a long way from changing such culture? I mean, or is there like, well, if there's a strong woman, I guess that's like one of the one in a million. 
you know, I was like, it's going to take a while to actually have a lot of her, a lot of readers running around in, in Lebanon or in Arab community. I mean, watching um, when the film was released in Lebanese theaters, there were so many uh, females um, like feeling happy to see Rita mm. and feeling relieved that they they, they see they saw Rita on, on screen and and she represents what they want to be like. Mm. But there are there were others that were offended and felt no Rita is uh, is a very um, Bad, not bad, but like a very, um, I'd say, um, um, yeah, we, we could say like a bad version of Lebanese females because mm. they would expect, no, we have to be shy and we have to be very polite and we cannot, and we, we have to um, to think very well about each word we set out of our mouth. So there's two types of, uh, like in every society, there's this, um, this extremes of either... So many people would expect, yeah, females, even females were expecting. I mean, when I say pe people, I meant females. So there were a lot of women that they felt, no, I don't want to be, I don't want my daughter to be like Rita. I don't want my daughter to um, to speak bad words or to, to, to shout or whatever and to be that much free. And there were other females that were very... Um, happy to see uh, to see that on screen and to see that yes this is what we would look we would aim and we work to look like um in our lives yeah thank you so much for that um back to you lucian um so on that note as well the politics uh, uh the issue addressed in the dining room conversation how how current is that is that does that reflect uh, much of the corruption you know the talk uh, reflect the environment that's going on right now uh, yeah, there, there is, uh, like in every family, there's always talk about politics, about where we live. This uh, film uh, was supposed to be uh, from one of the reasons why I made the film is I wanted through the Lebanese family to understand better the country or uh, in general how families affect society and affect the whole country's uh, 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 development if you would like uh, it's like uh, from this family this micro uh, uh, space uh, where how they connect with each other how they talk with each other what they are experiencing you understand better the whole country and why there are so many issues in the country uh, of course the issues they talk about are current uh, the, they talk about uh, demonstrations uh, the corruption about um, uh, the garbage crisis, the things that happened from 2015 and beyond, and even before that, they talk about the electricity problems, which is something still uh, we are having until today. Uh, so many developments that uh, are very basic here, for example, in the US, uh, yeah, where you get them, uh, they are not uh, available. Uh, so many basic services, I mean. So, yes, they are talking about something that is real uh, from our daily reality. But, uh, of course, uh, uh, if we want to look at it, it's not about what they is being said, it's about what is left unsaid, it's what they imply about the small talk. The small talk is there not for itself as importance, but what it relieves as uh, psychological interactions between them and what it means really uh, deep inside as feelings and what is not being said. Uh, anyway, the film was uh, censored in Lebanon, and uh, in, in here in the US, it's gonna be playing uh, full as it is uh, without censorship. But uh, but in Lebanon, yeah, there was uh, there was a part that was uh, cut away, and uh, it, it almost got banned because I was refusing. I didn't want the the film to be censored, so they told me in case you don't want it to be censored, we're gonna ban the whole thing. So your choice. So at this point, I said, it's okay. Then <laughs> I don't want to uh, to kill the whole movie just because uh, of my um, insistence as an artist that the uh, work is shown as it is. Because, you know, uh, when you cut out a part of a painting, for example, it's not the same painting anymore. Uh, you cannot say it's the same painting while uh, there's a part of it that is uh, taken away, but uh, not by your choice, by somebody else's choice, which is the state in this, uh, in this aspect. So I guess um, that goes with my final question then uh, to you, Lucian. Like, um, of all the arguments presented with this uh, by these characters in this film, uh, were you trying to say, okay, this one's correct and that one's not correct? And also, do you hope that this movie could 
somehow potentially change people's mindsets? For me, it wasn't about uh, really giving answers to the questions. There was there's so many questions out there in the film. You you notice that there's big questions about uh, the way we live, the way we interact, the duality of of uh, uh, interactions, and how uh, a lot of things, the hypocrisy of relationships between uh, even the same family members, which could be the members of society or the members of the same country, uh, citizens in the same country. So, so this. Duality is it is it good or bad? It's at the end of the film. I don't give answers. It's just you you go out. Uh, you have a lot of questions for you to answer on your own. You could do your own research. You have your own lives also to think about. I would love that everybody goes and have a discussion about the film afterwards. That it becomes like a thought provoking. Uh, work of art this is always my aim when i do a work of art that it has some kind of thought provoking aspect to it that it makes you want to think more about the subject about yourself and about the society and everything that you're uh, living through every day all right well thank you so much i really enjoyed this film heaven without people congratulations again thank you thank you, thank you. Nice to